Um, thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for, for coming. And I uh, just wanted to um, start with a question, which is, if you're in a if you're in a village in Africa, you have a, a very basic consulting room uh, facility, um, and somebody turns up who y you have not seen before. I would just like to find out what procedures that you would do in order to start the the visual examination process. Okay, so the first thing I would want to know is just to ask them why they've come to see me. It might be that they've come because they can't see properly. It might be that they've come because uh, they're just interested to know whether their eyes are healthy and good. It might be that they've had glasses in the past but their glasses are broken. Uh, for whatever reason, it's useful to know why they've come. Then having asked that, you could ask them how their vision is, and do they see well far away, and do they see well up close. And if they're saying they're not seeing particularly well, it would be useful to know how long that's been for. Is that something that's happened just recently, uh, in the last few days or weeks? Is it something that's been like that for some months, perhaps three or six months? Or is it something that has always been a problem? They've never been able to see properly out of their left eye, for instance. Then once one's asked that, it would be nice to know about their health generally, um, whether they're diabetic for instance, or whether they have high blood pressure, and any medicines that they take, so for instance if they take anti-malarials. And also it would be interesting to know about the history of their eyes, so um, have they had cataract surgery done, did they used to have glasses or not, those sorts of questions. And also I would like to know about their family history. Is there anyone in their family with eye problems? So is there anyone in their family with glaucoma, for instance, would be a very useful question to ask, because if you have glaucoma in your family, then you're more likely to have glaucoma. And. Um one of the things is that we, we're going to be using um, record cards to record the answers and to record some of the history that they are going to be giving you. Um, are there some questions that would be more relative according to the age of the patient? So you're not really going to be as interested in a family history of glaucoma in a child. Right and children are less likely to have problems with reading, it's more likely that they will be short-sighted and so they will be having problems looking far away or that they will be highly long-sighted in which case they will have problems everywhere. Whereas if you're looking at a person who is 40 years old or older then it's very common to have good long-distance vision but weaker reading vision due to what is known as presbyopia or the sight of old age, that's very common. And again, eye diseases such as cataracts are much commoner as we get older. So most of the eye disease is commoner in older people. Uh, that's where I would think. Right, so if they're over a particular age, then you would change your questioning a little bit to um, cover issues that would be more relative to that, that age. I think so, and I wouldn't ask people whether they've had eye surgeries and things like no. that if they were a child. You do get some children who are, who are born with, with cataracts, so that's just, I suppose, one thing that you could, you would know pretty well straight away, wouldn't you, if a child turned up with a congenital cataract situation? Well, I think congenital cataracts are relatively unusual, so if one deals with the more common things, then um, you, you would be thinking cataracts in older people, yes, yes. Um, glaucoma once you're in your 30s or 40s, right. and um, with children, um, particularly teenagers, then uh, if they're having problems looking far away, then that could well be the beginnings of short-sightedness. Okay, um, Steve, we've been looking at the symptoms and history of um, the patient, and we're going to talk a little bit later about how we, we keep the records and how we record uh, some of those things on the record card. But I'd like to move on now to the actual refraction. So um, I'm just going to hand over to you to just demonstrate the, the procedures that you would use just to find out whether they've got a visual problem uh, that can be corrected with glasses. Okay, so the, the first thing that I would try and work out is whether they have a problem seeing far away or whether they have a problem seeing up close, uh, whether the problem is in one eye or in both eyes, and whether they are actually seeing very well, but they just think it would be nice to have their eyes tested. That would be the first thing I would try and sort out. So 
In order to try and find out whether somebody can see far away, we use uh, a test chart. So for instance, here is a test chart here, which uh, utilizes uh, what are known as tumbling E's. So this is various letter E's pointing in different directions. And here is a test chart which uses letters that can be read. Now, the first thing that you would do is you would have your test chart at a distance and get the uh, patient to have a look at the test chart and then you would cover up one eye and then see how far down the test chart you can, they can see. So you want to see how far down they can read and you would want to write that down. And to cover up an eye you can do that in various ways. You can cover up an eye just with a hand. Don't use your fingers or people will look through but with the palm of a hand you can cover an eye. You can cover an eye uh, with a ruler or a book or anything useful that you have or you can cover the eye uh, with this sort of device which is uh, covering one eye and then there's a hole on this side so that I can see through. So you would work your way down on one eye and then you work your way on the other eye and write those things down so that you can see what the person can read. And then you would have a look at a near chart. So this would be a book with different sizes of print. And again, you might want to see what the person can see there. One other test which is very useful is what is known as the pinhole test. So the pinhole test, um, I have one here, is that there are multiple small holes in this part of the, uh, of the cover for the eyes. Or else, if you're using a trial frame, you can use the pinhole for the trial frame. So this blank disc has a very small hole in the middle of it and can be just slotted in to the trial frame like this. And then having established what the person can see um, with um, one eye just totally naturally as they walk through the door, one can then see if that improves when they look through a pinhole. If it improves when they look through a pinhole, then that suggests very strongly that there may well be some sort of refractive error, some sort of need for glasses. It's possible that it is actually an issue with cataracts because cataracts also improve, the vision through cataracts improves when you look through a pinhole, but it is more likely that it is to do with a need for glasses. So yes, um, Steve, where, whereabouts would you put the chart then? Okay, so there are normally two ways of using the chart. Either you use the chart at six meters, so this is usually if you're outside vision screening because most people do not have rooms six meters long, or if you're indoors, usually the chart is placed behind the patient's head and then there's a mirror on the far wall of the room so that the mirror is three meters away and the chart is effectively at six meters, three meters to the mirror, and then three meters back to the chart again. And, and lighting is quite important as well, isn't it? Yes, obviously you don't want it to be very dark so that you can't see. On the other hand, you don't want to have the, uh, the bright noonday sun shining down so brightly that um, it, it's very, very dazzling. So you have to try and find somewhere which is uh, reasonably bright um, but not so bright that it will dazzle people and cause glare. Um, and, and for reading, um, I guess, you know, we're dealing with people, a lot of them can't read, but they might be doing um, activities like sewing or cooking, things like that. Um, so how would you sort of test for that sort of thing? Well, you could ask them a functional question. So you could say, well, can you thread your needle? Um, can you um, see what you're doing when you're preparing food? I think if you found that um, somebody, uh, that it was difficult to uh, assess things using uh, written charts, then you might devise your own functional test. You might say, well, look, can you thread this needle for me? And maybe have different sizes of needle and thread just to see how well somebody could do. That would be a possible way of going about it. So Steve, how would you interpret the results? You, you've done what you've just suggested with the pinhole and the, the um, with, it, with and without the pinhole. So you've got an idea that there is some um, perhaps refractive error. So how would you interpret the results that you find? 
Okay, well, if I take it kind of generally, um, if you have somebody who can see your chart very well when they're looking far away, so at three or six meters, but when they come to look at near things or when they come to do your near functional tests, such as threading the needle, they just can't do it. And this is an older person, maybe over 40, and their problems when they talk to you at the beginning were all around close work, then I would think, okay, this is probably somebody who has good distance vision, but who simply needs some reading glasses to help them to read again because they've lost focusing power uh, with increasing age, so what is known as presbyopia. If on the other hand you have, uh, let's say, somebody who can't see so well far away, then you're thinking to yourself, perhaps this person is short-sighted, perhaps they have astigmatism, perhaps they have cataracts, something like this. If the vision improves looking through the pinhole, then that would be extra evidence that they probably do have a refractive error and uh, it would definitely be worth refracting that person to find out whether you could improve their vision with glasses. If the person has good vision in one eye far away, but poor vision in the other eye, then there may be some disease of the, of the weaker eye, or it may be that they have a squint and amblyopia. So one eye is good and one eye has never been very good. And there it would be interesting to say to them, you know, has this eye always been poor or is this something recently? If they say to you it's always been a bad eye, then it may well be that this is an eye with amblyopia. Okay, so um, let's start with um, the patient who can see very well in the distance but is struggling to see things close up. What would be the steps then to help them? Okay, so with that sort of person we are thinking if they're an older person that this is likely to be presbyopia and if we had a lot of time then we could decide we would refract them and then work through to near vision after that but if we have a lot of people or we are pressed to sit with time then we can simply use reading glasses and i would start with a weak strength of reading glasses and then go on from there so I would ask them to look at something up close, uh, whether this is the uh, functional test such as a needle and thread or whether this is a book and then we would uh, perhaps put on some reading glasses, perhaps some uh, plus one and a half reading glasses to start with and see whether that makes it better and whether they're able to do things. We could ask them how close can they come before things go blurred and then um, if they're still sort of having to hold things quite a way away we could try something stronger so perhaps some plus two and a halves and see how close they come with those um, we don't want to be able to read here because that means that they will not be able to see very well down um, towards their lap but we want a reasonable range of vision so that they can see at a normal distance so if the two and a half is very much up here then perhaps we just go back to plus two and try and find something that suits them yeah. and then that would be it. Um, I think the guys in Nigeria may have um, a flipper which has got um, two, two lenses on it which are a plus one or a plus 050. I mean would they be useful for fine tuning? You could say if you're having a look at the, um, at the reading chart or the uh, needle and thread and you've got the reading glasses on then you can use a flipper over the top. You can just say do you prefer it this way or this way or is it better this way or this way and see how the person responds. Now you have to be careful with flippers because some people will always say it's side one or it's side two. They will always say that or if you just hold it down and say is that better they will always say it's better. Uh, so perhaps the safest thing is to show them both sides and ask them which they prefer and uh, if they prefer the plus side then add more plus so stronger reading glasses. If they prefer the minus side then less plus weaker gl reading glasses if they say they're about the same then that is probably okay. the end but I would be very careful to check what that range of clear vision is right. so as not to be too strong or too weak okay that's great